I'm Sarah Sharp and I love paper piecing. So I just wrote this book, it's called Adventures in Paper Piecing and Design. Um, over the past eight years, I've made a lot of mistakes paper piecing. This book has the tips and the tricks that you'll need to avoid those mistakes and make paper piecing something that's really fun uh, and that's not gonna trip you up. So let's talk about the quilt that's on the cover. That quilt is called Plant Lady and it's made up of eight different plant blocks. Um, we've got the dune grass block, banana leaf, wheat grass, uh, fern rose, shell cactus, echinacea, bamboo shoots, and tin can sprig. And so each of those blocks in the book helps you take on a little bit of a different challenge. We, today we're going to start with the banana leaf block and we're just going to talk about the method itself. So we're just going to start at the beginning. So paper piecing. What is paper piecing? It is sewing on paper. Uh, pattern templates are simply made up of lines and numbers or a combination of numbers and letters. The banana leaf pattern has two sections, one, two, I call them A and B, and each, um, each section will be pieced sequentially in the order that's indicated on the pattern until the entire pattern is covered in fabric. And so I'm gonna show you how we go about that next. So the first thing that I like to do when I paper piece is to pre-cut all my pieces for a given section, and that's what I've done here. So you'll see here that we have our, our template section for A, which is the top half of the banana leaf. So it's this part up here. And so I've cut um, roughly a half inch seam allowance around each of the um, little numbered areas that we have. So you'll see here is the, the fabric that's going to go for A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6. Okay. And the top background section, which is A7. And so now that we have all of our fabric pre-cut, I'm going to show you how we want to position our fabric so that it's in the right place for sewing. So here, I'm going to take you want to start with the first area, which is A1. So I'm taking the fabric for A1. I just want to line it up roughly. So this, when we're looking at the letters and numbers that are on the, on the template, that's the back of the pattern. It would be as if we were looking at all the seams on the back of something that we've sewn together, but the paper's there blocking our view of where the seams are going to be. When you flip it over, you'll see that you just have a clean blank piece of paper and then you also have the right side of your fabric. So we've positioned A1 in place, and now we're gonna take the fabric for A2, which is this nice shot cotton here. So here, what I like to do is first, I like to position the fabric in place of where it's going to wind up. So again, even though it's a shot cotton, so you can't necessarily tell, we've got right side out. So both of these are right side out. But of course, that's not how we sew things together. We have to get them right sides together, right? So I'm gonna show you a little flipping method that I've um, kind of developed over the past several years that I think uh, tries to take out some of the seam ripping that I think people uh, commonly fear with this method. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So we have both of our fabrics in position, but we have this little flap here, and that's the seam allowance and it's going to, um, we need to get it underneath the piece, right? So we can sew it because that's not where it's gonna wind up. So I'm gonna put the fabric that I'm joining closest to me, so that's A2. I'm gonna put it down. I'm just going to flip it over along the line that separates the areas one and two. I'm just gonna crease that gently. I'm gonna pull back the paper so this is just the paper, and I'm gonna use my fingers to kind of keep in place the two fabrics that I just had in my hand. Now here we've got the seam allowance for A1, so that's this nice little crosshatch metallic. Then, still trying to keep everything in place to the extent that we can, we're gonna pin down the fabric for A2, and then just gently lift up this fold. This is the seam allowance that was in the way when we were looking at it from the other direction. We've got it right there. 
and boom. So that's what we want to pick up, take to our sewing machine, and then stitch along the line separating these two areas. And what you get after you do that is this. So usually you would have a little bit of an overhang. This has already been trimmed, but what you would do is you would just take your scissors, eyeball a quarter of an inch seam allowance, um, cop, uh, cut it off, and then here you go. And then you would keep going until you get to this, which has everything covered. You flip it over, you see that along all edges of the pattern, you have at least a quarter of an inch of fabric extending past the edges. And then you're gonna go ahead and trim that. So here, you can see this is a nicely trimmed uh, banana leaf. This one, we've already started peeling the paper a little bit, but you kind of get the sense of, you know, here you've got your nice um, quarter of an inch and your block. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sarah Sharp. You can find me on Instagram at nohatsquilts or at nohatsinthehouse.com. Um, and I hope you check out my book, Adventures in Paper Piecing and Design. Thanks.